There's magic in the night when pumpkins glow by the moonlight. Hi guys, I'm so excited to share these unique glow-in-the-dark treats for a glow party dessert table. It's so easy to give your sweet creations a glow up, whether they're made of chocolate candy coating, buttercream icing, DIY sanding sugar or fondant. The possibilities are endless because the sky's the limit. Today we'll be making cake pops, chocolate covered Oreos, candy corn inspired apples, and zombie brain cupcakes for spooky season. However, you can use these skills any time of year and to impress at a fun glow party event. The magic is all year round, not just for Halloween. So let's create something magical! Transforming your chocolate treats with a magical glow only requires a few essentials. You'll need the usual oil-based candy colors as well as Lumo Glow Dust and your favorite neon shades and high-quality melting wafers such as Merkins. When mixing the colors, it's important to have the melted chocolate at a thinned out consistency. That way the powder blends smoothly without detecting any clumps. The powders I'm using are from Etsy. The Rollcom brand Lumo Glow Dust is very versatile. I'll be showing you guys how to add it to sanding sugar, fondant, and buttercream mediums later on in the tutorial. Here I'm adding small spoonfuls of the product with an eighth of a teaspoon at a time. I usually start with three of those and mix it thoroughly into eight ounces of chocolate. Then boost it up with one more spoonful if needed as a baseline of half a teaspoon total. Depending on the result you want to achieve, feel free to enhance the baseline with just two drops of candy coloring. Only little is needed to deepen the color while maintaining the unique fluorescent quality of the product. After mixing the orange, I'm creating glowing pumpkins with this pumpkin Oreo mold. Remember the chocolate should be thinned out to a fluid consistency. That way you can pour it into the cavity with an OXO pouring cup to about a little less than halfway and lightly press the Oreo into the center. Then fill in the top until completely covered and give it a tap 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 to settle out the chocolate. Let it set in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes and pop the Oreos out of the mold for an easy glowy treat. After testing them all out, I noticed the purple and red are the only colors that don't glow well in this Lumo collection. It was disappointing how the purple pigment didn't even require additional candy coloring, but looks are deceiving because under a black light, it didn't seem to glow compared to the other colors. However, the green, yellow, orange, and pink are super vibrant and glowy. For the green, I mixed it gradually the same way as we did the orange, and to finish building up that baseline, I dropped in some color mill in the shade Lime for a neon green. If you prefer for the spider and bat details to glow, you can switch out the purple for another color instead of how I did it, but for any detail work involving molds like this, I find it most precise to etch the areas in with a toothpick instead of a piping bag to prevent going outside the lines and have the most control. Another tip is to prop up the mold on some sort of stand. They're usually in the craft section at Dollar Tree, similar to painting on an easel, and it's a lot easier to see what you're doing. Both the bat and spider molds can be found on Amazon. I will link all the materials down in the description box below. These specific oil molds are slightly tighter and more narrow than others, and the cookie is more likely to pop up. So I recommend modifying the technique by filling with less chocolate than usual just until the bottom is covered and ensure the oil is pushed down all around the edges before covering the top. Also make sure the Oreos aren't double stuffed. Next, the only part that's missing on the Oreos is our glowing jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own glow-in-the-dark standing sugar. 
Go ahead and place white sugar crystals into a Ziploc sandwich bag and a tiny amount of cornstarch to prevent clumping, along with small spoonfuls of glow dust and a few drops of Rolcom dry essence. The dry essence can be used for splatter or painting by mixing with the Lumo dust. Now combine everything in the bag until well mixed and check the intensity of the color. To build it up, add another spoonful of the glow dust and a few drops more of dry essence for your desired results. While not in use, keep the sugar covered so it doesn't clump together from the humidity, but once you're ready to apply it, brush on a small layer of edible adhesive wherever you want the sanding sugar to stick. This is going into the impressions of the eyes, nose, and jack-o'-lantern grin because it's not a Halloween party without a glowing jack-o'-lantern on the table. Lightly dust away any remaining sugar with a fluffy brush. The next glowy sweet treat are these colorful candy corn apples. Simply insert wooden candy apple sticks into the core of the apple with a mallet and dip the first layer into white chocolate for the tip of the candy corn that peeks out on top. Especially being that the apples are being triple dipped, always thin out the chocolate to keep the layers smooth and seamless. Coconut oil is my go-to thinning agent for Merkins. If you need more help with thinning out your chocolate, I outline it step by step for four different chocolate brands, three videos back or in my ebook found in my Etsy shop. The middle layer is orange with the neon orange colored chocolate and the last bottom layer is the yellow neon color. I noticed the yellow is even more intense and bright, we don't want to blind anyone. So it's a good idea to check under the black light as you're mixing. I use three spoonfuls for the baseline instead of four, and a few drops of yellow Chef Master candy coloring to complete this simple but sweet design. If you like simple dips that don't require as much decorating, the glow speaks for itself and takes it to another level. For the third treat, we're switching it up with these creepy brain cupcakes that have a super cool glow-in-the-dark pink buttercream. The recipe is a copycat Swiss meringue buttercream from Bake My Day Nemo. I show making it in my pricing video and it's my absolute favorite. So easy and pipes like a dream, yet tastes like it came from a bakery without being overly sweet or gritty. Our friend Boo says you gotta try it. I made half of the recipe and a little Lumo dust goes a long way. All you need to do is mix in about a quarter teaspoon at a time, checking under the black light to see if it has reached your desired glow. There was no additional gel food coloring added, just give it a good mix so no speckles of powder are seen under the black light. Now pair the buttercream with your cupcake flavor of choice, whether it's from scratch or from the box. I just baked some Pillsbury vanilla cupcakes to cut down on time as a quick idea for a Halloween party. Even red velvet or strawberry are great flavor ideas. The fun part is the decorating. A creative cupcake trend this year was the hack with the hot cocoa bomb molds. Let's get into our inner scientist and begin piping two straight lines down the middle of the sphere to divide the right and left hemispheres of the brain and fill in each side with random squiggly lines that go in alternating directions. All this was done with tip number 12 and finish by filling in the remaining empty section of the sphere while leveling off the center so the cupcake can sit on a flat level surface without being lopsided. The key is to gently press without too much pressure to keep the squiggly line pattern as defined as possible. Don't overthink the pattern, the more random the better. I like to complete the squiggles in one long continuous motion, however it's okay to stop and take breaks too. All the magic happens in the freezer, you'll want to freeze them for 40 minutes and once that's done, peel away from the mold and we have the most genius 3 dimensional brain to complement these cupcakes. To give you an idea, the half recipe of the buttercream pipes approximately 9 to 12 cupcakes.
Last but not least, these glow-in-the-dark cake pops are out of this world. I'm preparing a vanilla cake pop recipe from scratch with the silicone mold method. This is for anyone that maybe rolling by hand isn't your thing, or you just don't like the taste of the cake pop dough. If you haven't seen it already, I show all the tips and tricks in this video right here in the iCard on the screen. To your mixing bowl, add one stick of softened butter with one cup of sugar and cream those together until light and fluffy. After that, pour in your two whole eggs, a quarter teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and beat the mixture together really well until fully incorporated. Then alternate between the dry and wet ingredients and additions. Total, there's one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a cup of milk. I recommend folding a third of each ingredient in at a time until all additions are folded into the batter. After spraying with non-stick, it's time for the batter to go into the molds. I'm filling each cavity to the top with a piping bag. Again, it's all based on whether you prefer the traditional dough method or this one. I have tutorials on how both can work for your needs and to the best of their ability. When it's all ready for the oven, pop it in to bake for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. For these perfect results and other important steps after baking, be sure to watch the other tutorial if you haven't already, because right now we gotta get dipping. Instead of a stick or straw, the eyeball cake pops are attached with a fork. Secure it in place by dipping the fork into a little bit of melted chocolate inserting into the center and stand upright into a block of floral foam while it sets. And the remaining designs have these colorful paper straws. There's a trick I'm going to share with you for whenever your cake pops are facing down. Once the chocolate on the fork or straw has set, dip the cake pop as you normally would, shaking off the excess as much as possible. Place it back into the floral foam or stand to dry, then pipe a small chocolate disc, almost like a little platform, to center the cake pop on top, holding in place for at least 10 seconds. This is my favorite method for a cleaner look to preventing those messy bottoms. The only product left to transform is our glowing fondant. For the technique, put about an eighth of a teaspoon of Lumo dust in at a time, kneading and working it in there, also checking under the black light to see the progress. There shouldn't be a need for any gel coloring. My only suggestion is not to work with large batches of fondant at a time. Stick to keeping the fondant and Lumo dust on a smaller scale. For the example, I showed mixing the yellow neon shade, but the iris of the eye is being done in green that was mixed with the green Lumo dust. I cut out the iris shape with the back of a decorating tip, almost like a circle cookie cutter. Next, the pupil was done with glowing pink fondant and the front of the tip as a mini version of a circle cookie cutter. Lightly press those pieces together and bring the eye to life by sticking melted chocolate on the back of the fondant. Tie the whole look together with glowing pink veins. I pipe the glowy pink chocolate with a piping bag and several zigzags for veins and a super fine pen-like tip by cutting a tiny opening on the piping bag. This glowing eyeball is sure to stand out and make a statement. The second cake pop design is a glowing witch minus the hat. Start dipping the cake pop in a glowy green chocolate, also remembering to do that same method I showed you for achieving that clean bottom by piping the little disc. We can't forget the glowing stars. I'm rolling out the neon yellow fondant and cutting out several stars with a mini star plunger cutter and sticking them on with a dot of chocolate. It's always best to pipe with the same color that matches the cake pop. Scatter on those stars and dress her up with the purple witchy hat. The silicone candy mold was from Joanne Craft Store. I really wish the purple Lumo dust glowed, but it still looks really cute on its own. 
I apply a strip of chocolate along the stick so the hat is able to lay flat and make contact with the cake pop. And the final cake pop design is Jack the Jack-o-lantern to light him up with the sparkly glowy sanding sugar. An essential tool to apply it is an edible adhesive such as the Wilton Dab and Hold. Brush on a thin layer and coat with a generous amount of the glowing orange sanding sugar. And to capture the look of his carved features, I have mini pumpkin face cookie cutters from the JB Cutters website. Cut out the triangle eyes and nose with his signature jack-o'-lantern grin and complete the design by sticking on with dots of melted chocolate. I hope this glow party dessert table inspired you to try out these fun ideas and you guys learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Trick or treat and happy Halloween. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.